Uh, I'm going to do a brief intro to web archiving uh, with uh, web recorder tools in IPFS. And then uh, we're also going to do uh, a, a few quick demos, uh, if time allows, and, and the network works. So um, yeah, so intro to decentralized web archiving. Um, briefly, I wanted to kind of introduce what is what do we mean by uh, web, web archiving. And uh, this is one definition from the International Internet Preservation Consortium, a uh, process of collecting portions of the web, preserving collections in archival format, and then serving the archives for access and use. And so uh, what do we actually do f uh, to make this happen? Uh, well, we record the HTTP ne network traffic, uh, we store it in archival format, and then we replay the archival data back to the user uh, in the browser. Um, and so uh, how did web archiving start and who does it? Uh, traditionally, it's been done by libraries and archives. Uh, that's kind of been the, where, where this uh, concept and practice originated. Uh, of course, there's an Internet Archive who've pioneered the field uh, in the late 90s. They, they have the, uh, the Internet Archive Wayback Machine, which many of you are, are familiar with. But I also wanted to mention uh, an organization here in, in, in Lisbon called Archivo.pt, who are also doing web archiving in Portugal, uh, and they've actually built their own uh, web archive over the past 15 years. Uh, and they offer actually some of the same uh, uh, functionality. They have their own Wayback Machine. Uh, they even have a save page now uh, that uh, accepts uh, user submitted websites, including uh, specifically focusing on Portuguese websites. So uh, you can check out their uh, archivo.pt, uh, and they use a lot of our open source tools as well. Um, so a quick shout out to archivo.pt. Um, there's also many other memory institutions around the world. Uh, the IAPC is the International Consortium of Libraries and Archives. Uh, I think it has over 50 members that represents organizations that do uh, web archiving. Um, and so uh, uh, the Web Recorder project focuses on building open source tools uh, uh, and making it possible for anyone to create web archives. And so our goal uh, is to build open source tools to make archiving more accessible to everyone, not just large institutions, uh, to focus on uh, fidelity of archiving and replay, and, uh, and create portable formats for web archives. Um, and so we're not an archive where we build tools for others to create their own archives uh, in decentralized ways. And our motto is uh, web archiving for all. Uh, and uh, IPFS, turns out, can help us with uh, a lot of these goals, including making web archives accessible via decentralized tech, uh, empowering users to make archives on their own and store them, uh, and, uh, and, and store and, and access uh, portable web, web archiving formats, which uh, I'll, I'll mention briefly. Um, and uh, also, what do we mean by high fidelity web archiving, which is a term that we often use? And by that, we mean archiving the web as accurately as possible, so preserving all of the dynamic interactions uh, uh, as much as we can, and re-rendering the data uh, as accurately at a later time. So archiving all the interactive things that happen on a website, including all the JavaScript, uh, and then playing that back from the archived uh, storage. Uh, and we use the browser itself to create web archives. Uh, there's not a separate kind of crawling tool that's, not, that's separate from the browser. It's all done using the browser to create and access the web, web archive. So it's a core part of the archiving process. And uh, who uses web recorder tools? Well, obviously memory institutions. We work with libraries and archives, uh, but as also want to support and currently work with uh, digital humanists, journalists, artists, activists, and really anyone who's interested in archiving uh, and preserving a slice of the web, perhaps you. Uh, and, so a little bit more about the, the Web Recorder tool ecosystem. Uh, so we have a bunch of different tools uh, that represent sort of these stages of the archiving process. And uh, later we'll demo some of these. Uh, we have a browser extension uh, that uh, works in Chrome and Brave and any Chromium-based browser. Uh, we also have a, a single site that can archive a single page at a time. We also have a web crawler. Uh, then we have a portable format. Uh, called WAXZ that we've been building that can be stored on IPFS as well as traditional centralized storage. Um, and then we have a web component based viewer that renders and replays archive web pages. Um, and uh, the way that this process works, uh, so here's kind of a, 
a brief, uh, again, the, these three stages, we use the one tool to create the web archive. It's serialized to a format. Then we use the replay web page tool to, uh, to replay the web archive. Uh, and this is for smaller scale, kind of manual archiving in the browser. And then for larger scale web archives, we have a, uh, a crawling tool that uh, is used for the archiving process that runs automatically, either by command line or via UI. Again, produces the same format and then can be accessed uh, via uh, the embedded viewer. Uh, and uh, so how much data can these to be archived with these tools? Well, uh, we have uh, quite a, a big range. We can have anything from, certainly f that we've tested thus far, from uh, a single page that's 100K uh, to a, uh, an archive that was over one terabyte, uh, and I'll, I'll show these later. Uh, and uh, it all is done through, through this waxy format. Um, and so what do we actually put in IPFS uh, in this case? So it's sort of the simplest thing that works. Uh, we put uh, in the, we use uh, a Unif UnixFS directory structure with uh, this waxy file and the JavaScript uh, for the embedded replay web page viewer. And so uh, this is sort of what the directory looks like. Uh, there's some uh, sort of boilerplate uh, HTML that includes uh, uh, the, the web component and the actual waxy file. Um, and uh, uh, so that's for a single web archive. We're also now working on pul putting multiple web, web archives at the same time. Uh, it's a similar process. We have the viewer, and then we just add more of these waxy files. Um, and we're also working on custom chunking of this format uh, to optimize for uh, deduplication and also figuring out what the optimal schema is for this layout. Um, and uh, also, so I've been talking about this waxy format, what actually goes into it. Uh, it itself is actually a zip file, um, and it contains these other, uh, it's a package format for uh, this other data, uh, there's a, the raw data is stored in a format called WARC, which is an ISO standard used by, uh, uh, comes from Internet Archive and other library institutions. And there's an index format. Um, uh, the whole thing extends the frictionless data package format. And we can include additional metadata, including uh, cryptographic signatures of the data so that the, the integrity of, of the format itself can be uh, verified through the data that's in the format. And there's a, uh, we have a spec for it. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's sort of the core uh, portable format that, that we're working with. Um, and now, uh, how does this work? Uh, we're gonna do some demos. So first I'm gonna actually pass it to Dave to do a particular example of, of one integration of these tools. And then I'll come back and do more demos. So yeah, we basically, this is an example of um, one thing that we've built out with using Web Recorder, specifically the Archive Web uh, Express tool. Um, it's basically, we wanted to get IPFS into like really end users' hands, uh, people that are not familiar with IPFS, people that are not familiar with like Web3 storage or Web Recorder or any of this stuff. There's a lot of value that we can start to bring to people right now, even before we have like these integrations into Chromium and all this other stuff. It's very usable now, right? So we wanted to display that in like a very simple way. Um, so this is a web extension that's going to let you archive tweets to IPFS using Web Recorder. And we're going to upload them to web3.storage so they can kind of have them all in one place. This is going to be the first in a series of like IPFS enabled extensions, which some will be like super simple like this, and some will get a little bit more and more complicated with peer-to-peer -peer stuff maybe, like audio video recording. There's a lot of different ways we can go with this. But for this one specifically, we're really targeting end users that are not familiar with IPFS. So the features is that we archive a tweet in a completely reproducible context, which he just described, um, which is the Waxy file. Um, and then users can input their web3.storage API keys to track all of their archives in one place. Implementation is um, basically, we don't do hardly anything in this. We're really, really relying on Ilio for this. Um, but basically just like copy the permalink out of the page. We put a button in there so you can pick which tweet you wanna do. Um, and then we, open a new tab to express archive web, let it generate the waxy file, and then upload it to web3.storage. It's a very lightweight extension. Um, web3.storage 
should have probably put this before, but if you don't know what it is, it's a simple file storage service for IPFS and Filecoin and Web Recorder. We got some explanation of that before, and we're going to have some demos after this. Um, I already kind of mentioned like the future of IPFS enabled extensions, but we're looking at audio video uploading, um, maybe a quick one page website publisher, much like Move has, um, but maybe not having to use um, Aggregor yet, although we, we all should be using it, it's so sick. Um, maybe peer-to-peer -peer file transfer with Durin. I have like a big list of ideas, but I really want more. So any crazy ideas for any of this stuff, please like send to me. I'll try and build it. You can build it. You can build it together, whatever. Um, so the roadmap for this right now, it's like really simple, right, extension. Uh, most of it's done, but we do want to improve the UI. <clears throat> I want to explore possibly like embedding the web archiver itself into the extension. There's been some examples around that. Um, there is an existing extension that does web archiving. Uh, there is some like restrictions around the manifest v3 stuff, which is a common theme in our lives these days. So we'll see wh where that's going to go. Like if we can find some cool workarounds in manifest v3, and then maybe we can integrate it in here. And then adding more gateways, upload some more gateways, possibly local nodes eventually. Um, so we're not re relying on that one provider of web3 storage. Um, it's now available in the Chrome Web Store. It's on the way to being in the Firefox uh, store. I have to just separate it out and make a separate build. But if you want to go ahead and download it, check it out. Go for it. Ilya noticed a, a pretty annoying bug <laughs> that I missed th this morning. So hopefully I'll have that fixed this afternoon and pushed up. But it, just definitely pull it down, see what you think about it. Um, if you're interested in contributing, give me your input, any of that stuff. It's Mean Dave Justice on GitHub pin-tweet-2-ipfs, and we're always in the Browsing and Platforms channel. There's my email. Thank you. Thanks, Dave, for that demo of a particularly new integration of, of one of our tools, uh, which is Archive Web Page Express. Uh, and I'm going to just do a very quick demo of, of this tool and, and some of the other tools that, that we have. So uh, what the extension is using is a site called uh, Archive Web Page Express, uh, which uh, it's basically a single page archiving system that runs directly in your browser. So for, for example, this is a, just the a IPFS CAM site. As soon as it loads in the browser, uh, it's actually archiving it as it's loading it. It's loading it through a proxy uh, uh, in order to be able to load a remote site. Um, and so you could see here that it's already archived 5.8 uh, megabytes. And so you could uh, go here and uh, and yeah, and essentially archive any uh, any page one one page at a time, and then we have an integration with uh, Web3 Storage, and you could click that button and uh, and it'll upload it to to Web3 Storage, um, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, uh, Archive Web Page Express designed for uh, a single page archiving. Uh, then we also have uh, uh, the uh, Archive Web Page Chrome and Brave extension. Uh, which uh, is for more uh, kind of uh, multi-page archiving in the browser and uh, uh, basically allows you to archive exactly what's loaded including stuff that's paywalled and so you get your, uh, you could archive with, uh, yeah, essentially if it's, if, if it's loading in the browser, uh, it will get archived with this extension uh, and I'll do a quick demo. Let's see if it, if it works here. So let's say we want to archive the IPFS camp hashtag. Uh, and I already have the extension installed. And so I go here, uh, call it a hashtag again, uh, and then I uh, click start. And uh, uh, it's using the Chrome uh, debug API in order to be able to fully archive a page. Uh, and it's actually, you can see here that it's already loaded this much data. Um, we also have this thing called autopilot, which uh, will actually uh, do some uh, repetitive behavior, such as clicking on tweets. Um, so if you wanted to go through a, uh, an entire uh, a Twitter timeline, uh, you can use this. So this is a custom behavior that we had to build. Uh, and uh, we have them for, for certain uh, social media sites that our users have requested. Um, and the idea is sort of emulates a user going through, uh, uh, going through a Twitter timeline. And so it'll just basically keep, keep running uh, and you can see here I'm logged in with a, I created a special social media account for this. Uh, that's our recommendation is to create a dedicated account for archiving uh, so that you only archive uh, exactly what you want and, and not uh, archive 
uh, stuff that you don't want. Um, and so I'll pause it right here. Um, and uh, I'll go and click on Browse Archive. Um, and so it'll show me that's archived uh, uh, 23 six megabytes here. And now it's using the uh, the replay web page viewer, uh, which I'll which is embedded into the extension. And uh, from here, I can actually uh, I can go and uh, I can download this uh, as the Waxy file. Uh, uh, and I can also uh, share an IPFS. Uh, this works particularly well in Brave, actually, because of the embedded IPFS node. Um, and so I can click on Start Sharing. Uh, and it should, and now it's, uh, it tells me that it's sharing this, uh, this web archive. Uh, and I copy the IPFS URL. And so uh, it should load pretty quickly, because it's just in my local node. And you can see here that it's loading it from IPFS uh, using the the replay web page viewer. Um, I can also, uh, let's say I can go into, um, yeah, and so uh, that's the archive web page extension. So it uh, allows for, and, and you can see here that I'm still logged in, or it says that I'm logged in, so it's archived as uh, as the this uh, Twitter user. Um, and yeah, so moving on, uh, I'll talk about replay web page. Uh, uh, that's the, the, the viewer for web archives. Uh, it's available as a, a web component in a single page app. Uh, it loads web archives directly in the browser, can load from uh, HTTPS or IPFS and hopefully other uh, schemes in the future. When using it on Brave, it uh, can use the, uh, the native protocol handler. Otherwise, it'll use the gateway. Um, and you could load it from replayweb.page. And so from here, uh, I can... Uh, for example, uh, this is just n now in in, uh, in Chrome. This is the archive I just created of the uh, of the IPFS camp hashtag, and you can see that it's, that it should uh, load everything here. Uh, and also, the the since I ran the uh, the uh, autopilot, uh, I should be able to uh, to click on these tweets. Um, so that's the, that's sort of the the interactive part. Um, is that uh, the what we mean by uh, by high fidelity is that the videos uh, are playing back. Uh, you should be able to click on the tweets, um, and so we try to recreate as much of the the website as possible. Um, we also have uh, an embedded mode for replay web page. Uh, uh, let's see where did I put the, here it is, uh, and that in this mode. Uh, this mode is designed for uh, being able to, uh, to, for example, embed a single tweet in a site. Uh, and we recently added uh, this little drop down. So instead of like to uh, encourage, for example, journalists and others who care about uh, archives and preservation and, and uh, uh, to avoid content and, and uh, avoiding link rot, uh, is that you could actually embed it. Uh, a web archive in a site, and then have this drop down that shows you uh, the verification, uh, the provenance of how this was created, the tools that were used, uh, and also signature information. And, and we have a, a whole process around that, uh, especially for web archives that are created using using our cloud crawling tools. And uh, and we're working with Starling Lab on this uh, uh, in, in this particular feature as well. Uh, and uh, what else? Here's a, a demo of a mentioned earlier, a very small web archive, re-archiving GeoCities from an internet archive. This site is only 104 kilobytes. And then uh, this, on the other end of the spectrum, this is a crawl that was run by volunteers archiving Ukrainian websites. This crawl is 1.8 terabytes, and they're all loaded from a single Waxy file. Um, so that's, that's sort of the, the, the range of the, the tools. Um, then we also have... Uh, to very, yeah, we have a uh, cloud crawler um, that uh, can be used to essentially create a crawl in, in the cloud, as I was mentioned, for automated archiving. And it'll basically uh, start a crawl uh, and uh, crawl a uh, whole entire site, and you could watch it as, as, as it goes. So in the interest of time, I'll, I'll skip that now. Um, but 
last thing I wanted to show is a brand new tool that we've just launched uh, uh, just this week uh, is the multi uh, waxy uploader. So we've demoed archiving a, a single uh, single waxy file to IPFS. So wanted to show uh, how you could archive uh, multiple files at once, and that's using this this uploader. So this is brand new. So if you've already created archives, either using the extension or the cloud crawling tool and you have WAXZ files, uh, you can basically go in using this uploader and it will, so let's, let me, uh, let's see if this works. Uh, and so this is, and so it'll basically, so what this does is it will, um, it will try to upload all these files to Web3 storage. Uh, and then we have a, a static site generator that uh, that will be used to to create a web archive uh, or essentially a, a static viewer for uh, for all, all these web archives. So I, I, I did prepare uh, an example of what it should look like when it's done. I believe um, maybe not. Maybe I uh, actually no. It's it is. So okay, so while that's there is an example of a so a previous upload. Um, so let me close that. Uh, uh, and and so here's a previous upload I, I made of three files, uh, and then and then uh, it creates a static site on IPFS uh, pinned on and accessible through the W3S gateway, and so each one of them uh, has. Uh, uh, yeah, so you could basically uh, create, uh, add some, a bit of metadata, um, and uh, each of them loads the uh, the replay web page viewer. Um, and so let's see, if, yeah. And so that's that's kind of the the end result is that you, uh, it kind of this is again still a work in progress. Allow you to combine multiple web archives and create. Uh, uh, yeah. So once that finishes, that, that's. Uh, this is basically what, what what it'll look like. Oh, sorry, I keep uh, jumping around. Yeah, so you could uh, add a description, uh, and yeah, and then each and so the, this the idea is that this can scale to very large archives because uh, each one of these files is loaded on demand. Um, and uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, yeah, so for example. In the in the case of the lab week, uh, there should be a a YouTube video uh, that also got archived, and so uh, that's embedded in there as part of the archive. Everything is loading from from there, um, and uh, okay. So I think we're yeah. So this it'll complete eventually. So but I don't want to take up the time. But uh, so you, you could also try it out. Uh, your own uh, and yeah, so here are some links to try out. Probably uh, also we're we're hiring. If you want to help us, we're looking for developers to help us with distributed systems and improving our web crawling and scaling uh, uh, to scaling high fidelity web archiving to uh, larger amounts of crawling. Uh, and uh, yeah, reach out if you have any questions. Uh, and uh, here's our contact. And uh, thank you.